Good evening everyone, my name is Dr. Saurabh Roy, welcome you all in the lecture of microwave engineering. So in the last lecture we discussed about the transverse electric modes field equation. Now in this lecture we will discuss about the transverse magnetic modes. So first see the key points of this lecture. So we will discuss about the transverse magnetic modes as well as different modes dominant as well as degenerate modes and numerical. Okay. So first see what is transverse magnetic. So, in the transverse magnetic mode, the wave equation will be del square Ez equal to gamma square Ez. Because in the transverse magnetic mode, it means the magnetic field component is 0 in the particular direction. So, in the z direction, the magnetic field component becomes 0. Only in z direction, the electric field component is present. Okay. So, similar case. So, first we write the cylindrical coordinate system of del square. So, if 1 by r dou by dou r, r dou ez divided by dou r plus 1 by r square dou square ez divided by dou phi square plus dou square ez divided by dou z square equal to gamma square ez or gamma is the propagation constant. So, from this equation using the OEB equation in the first lecture we have done in the second unit. So, here instead of psi we will put the value of ez and we can calculate the same thing similar way similar steps. So, Ez equal to E naught Z, Zn, KCR, cos n pi e to the power minus J beta G into Z and Z component is 0 because that is the transverse magnetic modes. Now, where Zn KCR is the basal function of the first kind of the system. Okay. So, here we can see the circular web guide. Now, we will place the value of boundary condition or we will find out the value of Kc but by putting the boundary condition. So, in the boundary in the jet electric field is there. So, in the boundary the, that field will be become 0. Now, we will see at the boundary condition requires that the tangential electric field vanishes at Ez equal to at R equal to A. Only magnetic field is present in the boundary. So, we can write down Zn Kcr equal to 0 because that is the variation at r equal to r. So, this term will become 0 at r equal to a. So, we can write down Kca a equal to x n p. So, similarly we can write down Kc equal to x n p divided by a. So, earlier also we calculated the value of Kc. So, earlier case for transverse electric case x dx n p divided by a because that is the derivative function in the earlier case. But in this case Zn Kc are equal to 0 where Zn is the oscillatory function. So, the roots of x of n p for different value of n and p are tabulated for lower values of n and p. So, in this table we can identify that for n equal to 0 and p equal to 1 the value will be 2.405. For n equal to 1, p equal to 1 the value will be 3.832. Similarly, for n equal to 3 and p equal to 3, the value will be 13.015. So, for smaller value for n and p, the table is there. For higher values also there, but in our uh, syllabus, we are not going for higher frequency. You already analyzed the lower different modes. Now, from this value, those are the direct value of x of n p. If we will put, we can find out the cutoff web number. Okay. So, now we will see place the value of Kc in the equation of electric field. So, the, our field will be in the particular z direction will become Ez equal to E naught z zn x n p divided by a into r cos of n pi e to the power minus j beta g into z. Similarly, for transverse magnetic case Ez value is 0. Now, we will find out the other field components like er, e phi, h phi and hr similar from the last case. So, here we will get E r equal to minus j beta g divided by K c square dou z divided by dou r. So, if we will place the value of E z in terms of r, then this term will come outside and whatever the all the terms we are keeping as a constant and we are taking is E 0 r. Okay. So, similarly E 0 phi and this term h phi, so that is also the wave impedance we already mentioned earlier in our last lecture also that is the wave impedance it means strength of electric field in one transverse direction divided by strength of magnetic field in another transverse direction. So, that is the called wave impedance. Okay. So, 
those are the field equation of impedance so so those are the field equation for our transverse magnetic case so here transverse magnetic case ez component is zero and here ez er e phi h pi and h okay so we started from this equation in our short zn kcr cos n phi into e to the power so kcr into cos n phi e to the power minus j beta z and we put the boundary condition that is ez equal to 0 at r equal to a so if ez equal to 0 then at r equal to a then this term zn kcr equal to 0 okay so zn is the oscillatory function bessel function so if kcr equal to 0 then at r equal to a so we'll get kca equal to x of np okay so where x of np is the root of those values for n and p value is different this value will be different so from this equation we can write kc equal to x np divided by okay so we'll place those kc equal to x of np divided by in this equation and then we find out the other field component like er e phi h phi and h r so those is the complete field, field equation for the transverse magnetic case now we'll see the different characteristics equation for transverse magnetic case so first mode propagation constant so here change is in terms of case the earlier case we've seen that is the derivative x takes of np is coming but here it will come x np divided by a that is the changes in the mode propagation constant now we'll see the next cut of OM number so cut of OM number kc equal to x n p divided by a equal to omega series root over mu epsilon so here mu and epsilon that is depends on the medium if it is air dielectric then you will call mu naught and epsilon naught where epsilon naught is the permittivity of the medium air medium and mu is the permeability of the air medium so from this equation also you can calculate the value of cut off frequency if we will put kc equal to 2 pi so kc equal to we mentioned kc equal to omega c root over mu epsilon or kc equal to x n p divided by a so if you will write down x n p divided by a into 2 pi f c root over mu epsilon so free from this equation we can write down f c equal to 2 pi a root over mu epsilon x n p divided by this whole term for a unbound for a air dielectric media this term will become for a air condition x n p into c divided by 2 pi a where c equal to root over 1 by root over mu naught epsilon naught okay so from this equation we can find out its cut off frequency the frequency at which wave propagation will be started in a circular wave guide in a particular that mode so now we'll see some other phase velocity so similar thing phase velocity we can consider calculate omega divided by beta so c divided by root bar 1 minus fc by f whole square so similarly we can calculate the guided wavelength lambda g equal to lambda divided by root bar 1 minus fc by f whole square and wave impedance so z of gi equal to intrinsic impedance in air medium or meter divided by root bar 1 minus fc by f whole square so for the value this value for air medium the value is 370 cm ohm or we can write down data equal to root over mu naught divided by epsilon naught okay so the value will be 377 ohm for a particular air dielectric okay so that is called intrinsic impedance of the medium this works okay now we'll see some modes what is dominant mode and what is degenerate mode so the mode at lowest cut off frequency in a particular wave guide is called dominant mode but in the circular wave guide cases it has the mode has the lowest smallest value of kc and a okay so the mode has the smallest value of the product of kc a is called the dominant mode. so in the diagram we have seen for transverse electric as well as transfer magnetic that the tabular format for the value will be lowest for T11 so that is 1.841 so that's why 
in a circular waveguide the dominant mode is P1. Okay. So, the mode has lowest cutoff frequency is called the dominant mode. Now, we will see the degenerate mode. Okay. Whenever two or more modes have same cutoff frequency, they are said degenerate means cutoff frequency is same for two different modes then that is called degenerate mode. For a circular waveguide T0P or TM1P modes are always degenerate how? So, in the when we will see the transverse electric the value of x dex NP value is like that for a transverse magnetic x dex NP will be like that. But depends on the KCA that x dex NP will be multiplication of KC and A. So, we will see this whole row the product is this 0 p for a transfer is electric 0 p means 0 1 and this one is T m 1 p this value is similarly this value and this value also same this value and this value also same ok. So, those modes are always degenerate modes the modes having same cutoff frequency they are said degenerate modes. So, here if you will see this value 7.0 point and there is small changes but almost the value of cutoff frequency is same ok, but other value is exactly we are getting the same point. So, the modes having same cutoff frequency they are said degenerate modes. Now, one problem an air filled circular waveguide has a radius of 2 centimeter and is to carry energy at a frequency of 10 gigahertz. Find all the T E N P or T M N P modes for which energy transmission is possible ok. So, here value is given first value is given for A equal to 2 centimeter and another value F is given for T 10 gigahertz ok. So, first since the physical dimension of the guide and the frequency of web remain constant the product of KCA also remain constant. So, thus we will get KCA equal to omega C root over mu epsilon A. So, equal to 4.1. So, first from this point KCA we want to find out the value. So, if KCA we will find out then so, that is the highest value for the particular waveguide. So, whatever the lowest value of KCA then those modes are possible to transmit energy in a particular waveguide. So, first from KCA equation we know omega c equal to 2 pi f c a value is already given that is uh, a value is given 2 centimeter and that, uh, that root over mu epsilon that is air field mentioned. So, you can write down omega c equal to 2 pi f c and this write down we can divide it by c and a value ok. So, if you will find out the value will be 4.18 that is the multiplication of k c and a ok. So, in a rectangular uh, sorry circular waveguard we have seen if k c a value will be remain constant then we will see the other things for, for finding out the cutoff frequency also the k c a value is important. So, any mode having a product KCA less than equal to 4.8 will propagate the OF with a frequency of 10 gigahertz. So, those modes are possible if KCA value is less than 4.1 or that is the value of X dash NP or X NP for a particular waveguide. So, we can see the possible modes that is the X X NP KCA equal to X X NP. So, that we can see T mode T 11 we know the value of 1.8.41, T m 01 the value is 2.405, T 21 3.054, T m 11 3.832 and T 01 also 3.83. So, those values are less than the 4 point. So, those values are only possible to transmit energy transmission is. So, whenever we will see the cutoff frequency of this case here we are finding out the value of KCA. So, below this particular then those modes are possible the transmission the energy from one point to the another. So, thank you. In the next lecture we will start the cavity resonator as well as we will discuss some other points. Okay. Thank you everyone.